Hello, and welcome to the Homeschooling and Loving It podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, your friend at homeschool.com and homeschool mom of six. Join us as we keep it real and chat about the ups and downs of this amazing adventure we call the homeschool life. So grab a cup of your warm favorite and a comfy chair and let's get started. And welcome back to episode three of the Homeschooling and Loving It podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and today we are chatting about summer learning loss and how we can avoid it. And I even have a summer learning challenge for you today. Well, actually, for you to pass on to your kiddos. (laughs) Some people call this the summer slide. Some people call it summer brain drain. (laughs) Whatever it's called, I can attest. I personally found years ago when I was a classroom teacher I felt that annual frustration each fall when the kids would come back to school with all their new pencils and their fresh new empty notebooks ready to learn something new, but only to backtrack, to review, to spend much time going over all the concepts from the previous year. Yeah, sometimes it would take us five to six weeks to review and get everybody back up to speed. So just think if we didn't have to do that heavy review every year and the kids could be jumping into new concepts right away. A lot of research has been done on this in an effort to help students not need to spend so much time every fall reviewing. And you know, interestingly, the studies show that students typically score lower on a standardized test at the beginning of the fall school term versus the same standardized test taken at the beginning of summer break. So that shows that there is a discrepancy in their in their abilities in their learning and what they've retained. So it's it it is an issue, it's serious. Research also shows, I got some statistics for you here that on average students have the potential of losing two months of math computation skills as well as reading achievement skills and you know these statistics are pretty sad and though they are in the context of typical school scenario what do they mean for me and you what do they mean for the homeschool world so that's what i want to talk about today well homeschoolers that take off the entire summer would have the same potential to become one of these statistics. It's not isolated to just the school world. It's learning and brain activity dependent. If there's nothing going on during the summer months, obviously there's going to be an issue. So don't get me wrong. I love summer break as much as you do. I love summer break probably more than my kids do. I look forward to the slower pace. I look forward to the restfulness of laid back summer mornings. I mean, come on, a cup of coffee and a sunny sunny front porch. Ah, oh, it's nothing better. But I also wanna keep their brains active during the summer. I'm not a year round homeschooler, well, per se because I love that summer break, as I mentioned. But I do try to pull in some activities that are super fun, but that keep them challenged during the summer. But I'm not saying that we need to follow them around with worksheets and flashcards and, you know, intense stuff. I mean, that's not fun, right? I mean, really, if I was a kid, I I wouldn't want to do that. So goodness, no, let's not go that direction. I wouldn't want to uh, make learning difficult during the summer and I don't want to frustrate the kids is basically what I'm trying to say we need to make it fun so what I am saying from my experience and for my kiddos in our homeschool situation during the summer we have a I guess you could call it homeschooling light whatever but we have to do a little something during the summer because of this particular reason, this whole idea of the summer slide, summer brain drain, whatever, learning loss, it's there, it's real, it's happened in our homeschool with our six kids. And so this is, this is, this is what we do. This is what we do to avoid it. This is what we do to try to make learning fun. I've got some things I want to talk to you about today and I'm going to throw out a little challenge and some great ideas, hopefully about 10 of them. All right, so summer's a perfect time to review things. 
So you don't need to look at summer like, oh my gosh, I've got to have this full blown lesson plans, the whole, no. Cause then, you know, it's not summer break. It's not restful for you either. And so the goal is mom gets a break, mom gets some rest, kids get some rest. We found that pinpointing the particular areas that we struggled in during the regular school term, good place to start to do some fun review. Remember the word fun. <laughs> It's also a great way to smooth some rough patches out. Maybe it wasn't a big deal, not a big struggle, but you've got a few patches that, you know, the kids could have done a little bit better on. Go back to those and create some fun learning in those areas or find something really fun online that will help them review and practice those areas. It's also a great time and we've we've enjoyed uh, finding a new type of exercise or new outdoor activity and getting involved in that together as a family. So like family bike riding, that's that's always really fun. But find a way to incorporate some exercise as well. Get outside, get busy. So anyway, this week I have a summer learning challenge for you. 10 fun ways to incorporate reading into your summer. So yes, reading challenges for this summer and hopefully they'll be really fun. So summer learning challenge number one, just read. More statistics, but experts seem to think that reading at least six grade age appropriate books during the course of the summer will curb that summer learning loss, that brain drain or summer slide, whatever it's called. But don't turn reading into another chore. Don't make it, you know, super stressful. You have to read for this amount of time. I'm setting the timer, you know. Don't make it stressful. Try to find books and things that really interest your kids. So that that brings us to challenge number two. Visit the library. Make library visits part of your summer routine, like you know, every Monday morning, go check out new books or whatever day your library has some really fun events because I don't know if yours is like ours, but there's always something really fun that they have scheduled each week at the library. And in my conversations recently with librarians, they love homeschoolers. So (laughs) I'm sure there are some great things going on at your library. And then while you're there at the library, let the kids choose their own books. I mean, yeah, it may be just some silly, maybe it's a diary of a wimpy kid. I mean, yeah, that's super silly, but they're reading. They are reading. So just encourage them, encourage them to pick their own books. And then that's, you know, that's kind of intrinsic motivation right there because they chose it. All right. So challenge number three join a summer reading challenge that could be at your library because most libraries do this but there are other summer reading challenges outside of the library like scholastic holds one i think it's called read a palooza or something (laughs) really crazy fun like that and even goodreads that online book site that that they're holding a summer reading challenge so find one that your family thinks is exciting and fun and that they want to get involved in And then challenge number four, if you can find one, create your own summer reading challenge. And I really liked this because you could start your own and involve your own family and have a reward system for a set number of books that you want them to read as their goal, or start a reading challenge for your homeschool co-op group, or I really like this one, involve your neighborhood kids. You know, that's a great opportunity to get your kids to know the neighborhood, non-homeschool kids a little bit better. And I'm sure their moms would really appreciate it. (laughs) They probably would love it. All right, so challenge number five, encourage your child to read every day. And of course, how? By reading with them. You know, more is caught than taught, right? So we can stand all day and look at our kids and say, read, you need to read, it's so important to read. But if they never see us reading, are they really going to assimilate that concept that reading is really important? No, because they see, they learn by example and they need to see us being that example. So read with them. I know it's summer, we all wanna break. You know, that's my thing. During the school year, I don't have, I don't have time to read but it's summer and mom gets a break too. So mom gets to choose books that she enjoys. Dive into something that you haven't read in a long time that feeds your soul, that encourages you, that 
that fills your cup. You'll find you'll be enjoying it as much as the kids. All right, challenge number six, don't just let them see you read, but read to them, reading out loud. Yeah, even the older kids like to be read to. It's a whole, it's a whole different experience when you're read to. Reading aloud is amazing. And if you can't find the time, maybe you don't feel comfortable with reading aloud to your children. I mean, we all, you know, maybe we struggle with that. Use an audiobook. There are so many free audiobooks available, even audiobooks available through your local library, as well as, you know, Audible. That's that's an amazing resource. Use the audiobooks to allow your kids to experience that read aloud moment. It's it's intense. It's fun. It's super fun. And alternate between times when the kids read themselves, the books that they've chosen from the library, and then times when you guys listen to audiobooks together. You know, doing that, that that will really keep it interesting. All right, challenge number seven. One of our favorite summer pastimes is visiting the zoo or museums or state parks. I really love this, but (laughs) <laughs> flip side sometimes my kids don't because yes I have a confession to make I am a sign reader you will catch me reading every single sign at the museum and so I'm always the last one out and it always takes me forever and my kids get annoyed and of course they tease me and they make fun of me but I promise I'll speed read if someone wants to go to the museum with me this summer all right challenge number eight Ask friends and family that are traveling this summer to send your kids postcards with a few details about the places that they visited. When the kids get the postcard in the mail, how fun is that, right? Everybody loves mail. Getting mail, that's cool. So they get mail, which is super fun, and they have to read something. Just sneaking in, just a little bit of reading. All right, challenge number nine, get cooking. Yes, even cooking is a great way to squeeze in a little reading. Have the kids search for the recipe they want. You know, they have to use indexes and all of that good stuff in cookbooks. And then they can plan and determine what they have, what they need, make a grocery list. And you can even go to the grocery store and the flip side of that ties into math. So that's pretty cool. Quite an adventure though, get cooking. All right, and then reading challenge number 10, play board games. Yeah, you heard me. You don't need to go buy those fancy learning games specifically designed for reading. The good old fashioned games like Scrabble, Monopoly, and even Boggle are perfect for reading, practicing spelling. It's awesome and super fun for the entire family. Well, that wraps up our 10 summer learning challenges for this week. I hope you found a few easy ideas for challenging your kiddos without officially schooling during the summer. I've enjoyed spending the last few minutes with you. And as always, I pray you have a week filled with grace and joy and that you'll join us next Thursday as we give our next summer learning challenge. 